So tomorrow is actually a very, very big day when it comes to earnings. Specifically, guys, one company that has just been completely crushed this whole entire, I guess, earnings season. And not crushed in a good way, but crushed in a pretty bad way. And that is the company Nike. And you guys can see it does have earnings after market and well, have you guys been noticing this company is uh, not doing too hot. So I figured, you know what, let's do a really, really quick, just kind of free cash flow approach. Take a look at their fundamentals, of course, and uh, see if maybe we want to buy this because there is this one piece of news here that may actually show that it's going to go a whole lot lower. So we're going to talk about that in today's video, everybody. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, maybe that's up with the algorithm on YouTube as well as well. Make sure to follow us on the Exxon Fellow Investing. If you like us on Discord, link is in the description below. That is the best way to get the daily content. So with that said, let's get started with this analysis. So everybody knows what the company Nike is. I'm not really going to go through the company's profile, but I do want to start with this article right here. Earnings preview. As of I'm recording, this is September 30th, and uh, this article is from September 30th, right there. Earnings preview. Nike expected to post a 10% decline in Q1 sales. Yikes. Nike is expected to post a sharp decline in revenue when the sportswear giant reports its quarterly results on Tuesday as the market closed. This will be Nike's first earnings report after the veteran Elliot Hill took the helm of the company in September. Hill returned to, to the CEO role. To replace John Donahoe, who is retiring. Wall Street expects the athletic apparel firm to post EPS of 53 cents in fiscal quarter one, while revenues is expected to fall 10% to $11.65 billion. And this is something that we can see right here. Well, as of the announcement date, which was going to be on October 1st, we can see that the EPS normalized estimates 53 cents, APS gap estimate 52 cents, and the revenue, as we just read, of $11.65 billion. And the interesting thing about this is, is that 15 revisions, all of them to the downside. This may serve itself as a great thing to like sell calls in or maybe even buy puts. I'm not condoning that in any way. I'm just saying that if you would like to, you know, 15% swayed to one side, we know exactly what this did at least last year when it came to the overall uh, tech sector. I'm not saying that Nike will follow the same way, but I'm just saying that normally something like this, when it's one-sided like this, you would, you know, you would ex expect it to go in the direction that they're expecting it to go. So with that, let's actually now jump into the spreadsheet. We got the ticker for NKE, market cap of $118.3 billion, a PE of 23.72. Now this is above my 20, but honestly, 3.72 above my 20. It's not even that bad. Current share price of $88.40. And this is the reason why I actually foresee this thing to be a really good opportunity to buy right now. On the one year, this is down 6.5%. Year to date, 18.6%. We're actually not at the 52 week low. 52 week low was $70.75. But as of today, guys, Nike had $88.40. Today it fell 1.16% and post market 0.1%. Now, they actually do pay out the dividend which is a current yield of 1.65 with a payout ratio of 36.62%. Now this 1.65 yield is actually $1.48 per annual share, a five-year CAGR of 11% or almost nearly 11% with 11 consecutive years of dividend payment. Ex dividend date unfortunately passed as of September 3rd, but and the payout date is actually going to be the same day that they have their earnings, which is kind of hilarious. So October 1st will be the payout date. And of course, they do pay their dividends quarterly. Now, they don't pay out, guys, a big dividend yield, right? They don't. But it is about the CAGR that's mainly enticing me when it comes to this company. But with this $1.48, if we come over here to the calculator, we can see that this $1.48 represents around $2.22 billion in dividends every single year being paid out. And based off the 10-year average free cash flow, they have left $1.85 billion. Last year's free cash flow, it goes up to a whopping $4.4 billion. And these payout ratios are really good. 10-year average is under 60 at 54.65%. And the last year's cash flow payout ratio, it is 33.62%, meaning that they could easily, easily afford this dividend currently and even to increase it in the future if they so wish to do so.
Now we're going to go over the fundamentals really quickly because I've done this before. But we can see here that guys, the net income increasing from 3.3 billion to one year ago of 5.7 billion. Ups and downs here and there. Overall though, increase of 74%. I'm going to give this an 85%. Looking now into the cash flow, it looks very, very similar to that of the net income. 10 years ago of 3.72 billion to today or one year ago of 6.62 .6 billion dollars increase of 78% with an average of 4.1 billion. I'm going to give this guys an 85%. Now the revenue, it is the best one of all of them. Nice consistently increase all except for one year, 10 years ago of $30.6 billion and one year ago, $51.4 billion. But again, we're going to see this revenue drop for fiscal Q1 because they actually ended their, uh, their, their year already they ended their year in May. So yeah, we're probably going to see a pretty decently sized chunk taken out of this revenue um for this fiscal year right for this fiscal year which we're only going to get one quarter so far so don't take it too much right we still have three quarters left for their fiscal year and this is an overall increase of 67.4 percent i'm going to give this an easy 95 percent into now the assets as a reference only nicely increasing as well as the liabilities as well nicely increasing which is not good however you can see that the total assets and total liabilities it's essentially flat yes it has gone down into the five-year goal mark but then it has picked up as well average total assets of 3.5 billion dollars liabilities of 18.22 billion dollars a difference of 12.3 billion dollars i'm gonna give this guys it's not the best so i'm gonna give this a 70 percent is essentially flat i guess you could say not bad but i really would have liked it if it was consistently increasing when it comes to the cash flow minus the liabilities obviously we saw the liabilities increasing and uh, the cash flow it's kind of just bumpy but we can see that from five years ago to date it is actually increasing but it is a massive downturn from 10 years ago to five years ago all in all as of one year ago, it is negative $17 billion. The average is negative $13.61 billion. I'm going to give this a 50%. I don't have no idea where this is going. Looking now into the shares outstanding. Really, really good shares outstanding. Consistently, well, not consistently decreasing, but it is very nicely decreasing. We got 10 years ago, 1.7 billion shares to today of 1.5 billion shares. There's a buyback of 12.21%. Previous year to the current year, a buyback of almost 2%. Guys, not consistently decreasing. However, they issue when they issue, when they have to issue, and they buy back when they buy back. Nothing here is too big of a deal for me. I'm going to give this an easy 100%. And lastly, cash and COVID, they currently hold uh, $9.86 billion with an average of $6.68 billion. For an overall grade, it's actually an 84%. It's a good company, guys. I mean, it's Nike, right? It's, it's one of the biggest, if not the biggest, uh, footwear apparel store in the world right in the world so not surprising that this got a, a b plus for me on this one the problem is or i guess not really the problem now the thing is is the this price of 88 dollars after a massive dump is this a good price to buy out right now this is a great opportunity to buy right now because remember what i like to teach here is hey when markets are falling now it's time to reanalyze your positions if nothing has changed Time to buy some more, right? Time to just double down and buy some more because eventually it will go back up if a company has good fundamentals. So let's now move into the discounted free cash flow and see if this $88 is actually a really good price to buy this company at. All right, guys. So now let's head into now the discounted free cash flow. And right off the bat, we can see that these numbers look really interesting. $95.02, not adjusting for debt, and then $101.31, adjusting for debt. So let's input some of these numbers, shall we? We got the average 10-year revenue being 6.13%. So let's put in, I don't know, let's say four for the lowest assumption. Then let's go up to, let's just say six, right? Six, and then eight for the highest assumption. And now for the protected share buyback, let's say uh, they've been doing around 1.43%. That's fairly accurate. Let's say one, oh man, let's say one, uh, sorry, zero, one, and two percent. I think that's very fair as well. Now for the required rate of return, really, really easy. I think I'm just going to go the S&P 500 at 10%. And wow, guys, take a look at this. We got $46.41 to $77.62. And then adjusting for debt, $52.80 to $85.32. Guys, at this current price of $88, yeah, um, it's a good buy. 
right? It's it's it really is a good buy. Even taking the median assumption, sixty six or sixty seven dollars compared to eighty eight dollars, that's only a twenty dollar difference. Honestly, that to me. Me, me personally, not telling you guys what to do. This is not financial advice. Every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. But all I'm trying to say is, is that for me, me personally, I would just start buying right now, right? I would just start buying right now. And if it were to fall even more, I would just continue to buy even more as well. So this is my personal opinion. Not telling anybody guys what to do, but it is a really interesting company. The fact that, yeah, it's looking like a great price to buy at right now. And if we take a look at these dividends, we can clearly see that with a dollar and forty-eight putting in six thousand two hundred and fifteen dollars, this sets you one hundred and four dollars and five cents, guys. In annual dividends, that's actually not too shabby. It really, really isn't, which is around twenty-six dollars per quarter. So all in all, that is my analysis when it comes to Nike, guys. It's Nike, right? It's Nike. I get it. I get it. Oh, but the controversies. Oh, but this. Oh, but that. Name me a company that doesn't have controversies, right? Name me one that doesn't. The way that I look at this is people are gonna, never going to stop buying Nikes, right? People are never going to stop buying Nikes. People will continue to, to, to buy Nikes. And um, that's just the way that it is, right? That's just the way that it is. Under Armour. I Actually, I prefer Under Armour than Nike. But... It doesn't compare to the same caliper as Nike, right? It just it, it just does it. Like the the the, the endorsements that, that Nike gets is just ridiculous. So it's kind of or or the partnership deals that Nike gets is just ridiculous. So the way that I see it is, well, you could complain about the controversies, or you could take advantage of a company that is actually really good, has is profitable, pays a dividend, buy at a decent price, and once it starts to go up, which I'm not guaranteed that it will. But the fundamentals do show that it's a good company. If it does go up in the future, well, then you would have been really, really glad to have bought at this point and kicking yourself when you missed the, out on the opportunity, which has happened to me a lot. Not with, not with Nike, but with a bunch of other companies. Tell me, guys, what you guys think. Do you plan on buying Nike, uh, especially after tomorrow, if they do make the 10% you know, revenue decline? Uh, if they continue to fall more, would you continue to buy more? Tell me, tell me all of that if you guys wish to do so. Anyways, that pretty much is it for this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, really does help with the algorithm on YouTube, as well as well. make sure to follow us on XFL Investing. And of course, if you want to join us on Discord, the link is in the description below. So with that said, peace out, and we'll see you all next time.